Welcome to Dwalin's Tavern, your go-to gaming podcast. Join me, your host Dwalin, twice a week as we explore the latest and greatest in gaming and entertainment. Dive into news, reviews, exclusive interviews and lively roundtable discussions on the most exciting trends and updates in the gaming world. Welcome everyone. This is a new podcast called Dwalin's Tavern and, uh, well, your gaming podcast. So... This is a podcast I've been very excited to start. I've been talking a lot with people about the name, what should it be about, you know, uh, just everything. I've just been overthinking this podcast way too much. And we are finally here. You can listen to this podcast on every single, well, almost every single podcast platform. So if you prefer to listen to this while on a plane or driving a car, or sitting in, trans you know, public transport, or you want to just watch the one on YouTube and sit, look at me for... I don't know how long this podcast will be, but you would prefer looking at me just sitting and talking. That's also prefer well, an option. So you can even choose to listen to this on podcast platforms or watch this on YouTube. That is totally up to you. So, but welcome to my very, very, very first episode. I guess we could call the pilot episode of this podcast. The very first episode. And my dreams with this podcast is to make two episodes every week. So that means, you know, two episodes every week. And it's going to be about mostly gaming. But I know, you know, if like a very good like movie or TV series comes out as well, maybe even has some, you know, gaming relations like the new Fallout show. Um, we could even talk about that. But today I actually already have three things on the agenda. The first thing we're going to talk about is Core Punk. A brand new MMORPG is soon going into early access, but very soon, like in this month, we're getting the next alpha. But early access is just around the corner. The second thing we're going to talk about is Diablo 4 and the Season 4. This is, um, this is a season people have really been waiting for, because this is what some people call Diablo 4 2.0. It is making the game into what it should have been from day one, some people say. But um, more details on that very soon. And the last thing we're going to talk about is No Rest for the Wicked, which is um, a new ARPG in early access. They already released a lot of the content in the game, also in-game content. And I have finished the game 100%, well, as you know, the early, what the early access has right now. And I just want to give like a let's say a short review of it because I don't feel like it deserves a full review yet since it's still an um, early access game and I'm sure like only maybe 10-20% of the game is actually out but still what we have I want to give a review about. So let's jump to it. The first topic of today as just mentioned the agenda, agenda for you is the Core Punk news. So Core Punk is an MMORPG that I have been excited for since 2019 December, I think it was. Um, I saw the first trailer they launched and I made a video about it ASAP, which then brought me in connection with the developers behind the game. So the game director of the game actually um, like speaking with um, on a regular basis. And um, he's a great guy called Eugene. And we, you know, what he, <laughs> what he did was... Um, uh, uh, on Christmas Eve, the 24th of December, he actually surprised me at my home with a gift. It was a statue of um, one of the trolls, or one of the monsters in the trailer, um, which was a very nice moment. So you can you can probably hear on me that I have a high relation to this game. I know the P I know some of the people behind the game. And, you know, it's just a game I've been covered. Like, the game is not even out, and I've made 130 videos about it. Yeah, that probably says something. And But this game has had two public alphas where only chosen people could play. And, of course, well, not of course. Why am I saying of course? The first two alphas I was invited to, and I've been playing and live streaming and making content about. Now they're going to have a second, well, a third alpha, no, wait, they call it actually the Alpha 2, I think. Well, they call it Alpha 2 um, here in on the 27th of May till the 2nd of June. And in this Alpha here, we will be able to test a new things. Before we actually go into the new things, let's talk about early access as well. Early access is what they say. We're getting the Alpha here soon. 
which of course you know when the elf is done, your character get wiped and all that. Then they say if everything is going as planned, according to the plan, then early access is going to be two months later, which is on the 2nd August. Okay, that's pretty promising. But I think if we have to be realistically, you know, uh, the 2nd of August would be the earliest, the earliest of earliest. So I would more think realistically that it could be something like September or October. September, October, which I think would be more realistically. But, you know, if it comes out 2nd of August, I would be more than happy. Because, I mean, that would be great. Well, why not? That would be super fit. <laughs> I'm starting to speak Danish now. Uh, super nice. I was saying fit, which is nice. Um, sorry for that. So basically what this alpha and early access has of new content, for example, the alpha here, well, what they showed in the news post they re recently released is that they have finally bringing the talent trees to the game. So there's going to be eight branches of talent trees, uh, one called warrior, one called pathfinder, medic, support, assassin, mage, you know, and so on. They all have different passives, which are really tailored to what play style you want to play. And there's going to be eight of them. So in the alpha, which is coming later this month on the 27, you will be able to get up to level 15 and you will be able to choose between um, two of these talent trees at the same time. But when the early access comes, we will be able to actually level up all the way to 20 which is going to allow us to actually choose between three. So that means we can have the maximum. You can have choose up to maximum of three talent branches, and you will be able to do that in 20. So in the alpha, we can pick between two, two of them and play around with that. And in the early access, we'll be able to use three of them. So three out of the eight. For example, if you want to do a healer, you could take the medic one, you could take the support one, and I guess it depends on what playstyle you want to do. What do you want to do next to healing? Do you want to help damaging? Or do you want to maybe be able to off tank? So you would take the tank one or maybe take the assassin one if you want to do some damage as well. It kind of depends on your playstyle, but it it's really nice. The game allows you to be very customizable with, you know, what you pick. And again, when the, when the next um, alpha is done, I will of course make an episode here and talk about how it was and you know how we did with the different things. Yeah, as well from the previous testers, I've had some complaints about like the the food wasn't strong enough. They have said they're actually going to make the food stronger. They're going to add in the early access, not on the alpha soon, but in the early access, they're going to add two new zones, which has a different biomes. Um, Biomes, you know, like the, for example, the first zone you're going to level in from one to 20 is a, is a, like a, it's kind of like a country, uh, grass, uh, farms and forest, very green. But then they say the two other zones they're going to add in in early access is a two new biomes, which could be snow, desert, uh, death land, you know, fallout-ish, we don't know. But it is two new zones. As they say, it's going to be zones which is only for max level. So you're going to, in the grassland, you're going to level from 1 to 20. And then in the two new zones, you're going to be doing in game stuff. And they also said in the news that we are going to be getting two in game activities in early access. So it could be dungeons, it could be battlegrounds, it could be, you know, arena, raid world bosses world bosses in the world that spawns you know we we don't actually 100 percent know right now but it could be anything so it'll be interesting to see what it is but that's basically what i have about core punk that we're getting the alpha very very soon at the 27th of may and then we're getting early access roughly two months later after this alpha if everything goes as planned Great. Let's move on. So uh, next topic we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about Diablo 4 Season 4. So this season here is a very special one because it's called Loot Reborn. And normally it has some kind of like theme of, you know, 
uh, it's a vampire theme, a mechanical theme, a plague theme. But this theme on this season is actually Loot Reborn, which is in the name. It basically means they have changed the game in a good way. Uh, they have changed the itemizations, the gear, the drops, the upgrade ways you can upgrade your gear in game. You know, there's so many things they have done. I have taken some snippets out of the. They have a, like a very, very long news article. And I have taken snips out of it, which I thought was worth reading up for you, so you can get an idea of all the important things we are getting in this new update. So, for example, if you are an in game Diablo player, you will probably know what I'm talking about. If you're new to Diablo 4, some of this, what I'm reading up, might not make sense for you at all, but I will try and so make it sense for you. So let's let's go ahead. First, I said, reduced the number of affixes on items down to three on legendary items, two on rare items, and made these affixes more effective, which is a good thing. Well, it makes the game more simplistic that there, there's less affixes on legendaries and on rares, so you don't get items where it has way more on them. They also saying dropped items are now simpler to evalu evaluate and we move their complexity and customizations to our new crafting system, tempering and masterworking, which we will describe in more details below. We've also increased all, all values of these affixes so they should feel more powerful, which makes sense when you're going to have lower, like less affixes on your items, then of course they need to be stronger as well. And of course, in the article, they have tons more information about like, you know, stuff about this, but we're not going to go into like all the details. They also saying salvaging legendary items store their powers as legendary aspects in your cortex of power to be reused independently. Before, if you deleted a legendary item, for example, and you got the aspect out of it, you would have it in your inventory and you would use it on another item and then it would be gone. Now it's gonna save. So once you actually unlock one of those aspects from legendaries, like those abilities, like that can help your abilities. For example, now you can have two hydras active on a on a sorcerer instead of only one. Those will now be stored in your cortex of power forever, and you can and you reuse them indefinitely, as they, as they say. I don't know if this goes from season to season, or if they still want you every time a new season comes out, you have to refarm them. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. <clears throat> they're also saying, as you find and learn timbering manuals, blacksmith, blacksmiths across Sanctuary will be able to use these manuals of craftsmanship to shape the qualities of your equipment. Timbering allows you to add potent affixes to your item. So basically, you will be able to get these um, crafting manuals which is going to help you shape quality of your equipment and tempering is going to allow you to add these affixes to the items. So there's going to be both what they say, the master working and the tempering, which is two new in-game systems, which is allowing you to really upgrade your items and make them even better. Master working improves the overall strength of all affixes on your weapon and at every fourth tier massively upgrades one of your equipped affixes. The affix that receives the bonus will turn blue. If the same affix improved again, it will change to yellow. And in a rare case, it will turn orange if improved a third time. Appearing only on ancestral and legendary and unique items, greater affixes are now 1.5 more powerful version of normal affixes. Items with greater affixes drop with distinct audio cue, alerting you to the Oh, okay. So they will actually make like a different sound when they drop. So you know when a when a ancestral legendary is dropping, alerting you in your their presence and have a unique icon both in the world and within your inventory. So basically, you can get these ancestral legendaries, um, which has these greater affixes on, which are actually stronger versions of the normal affixes you would normally get. So. This is cool. This still gives you a reason to try farm items since you still want to be able to get these ancestral legendaries. That's cool. I like that. So this is just some of the 
like the entire itemization and so on you know it's going to change items going to be more simplified it's going to be easier for people to get into the game and people who really want some hardcore in game where they can really modify items is also going to be happy so something the next thing we're going to talk about in diablo 4 is something that really really makes me happy so we have something called hell tides which is like an event going on on the world so when you get to act three and four you can do hell tides which is like an event in the world where there's like very red demons and so on great fun with other people it really makes the game feel like an mmo because you see a lot of people what they have done is now well, well now hell tides can be done in world tier one and two which means when you create a new character in the new season in the new season which is actually coming today funny enough the 14th um funny enough why didn't i even mention that the new season is actually coming today on the 14th of may so as we speak right now i sure listening to this it's probably already out right now so Hell Tides is now going to be available in tier 1 and 2, which means when you create a new character, you will be ASAP possible to jump into Hell Tides ASAP and level up in Hell Tides, which is great for people who are really tired of leveling in Diablo season after season after season. Now we can actually do Hell Tides to get up to tier 3, which is, you know, probably the like, what is that? It's like the first 50 levels, which is great which is super great. Um, they have also added something fun to Hell Tides. They have added a threat level where you can become, it's kind of like, you know, Grand Theft Auto, where you can keep getting a higher star. And once you get to the high star, which I think was a threat level three, you get Hell Marked, which is going to summon a very strong, like a general commander, something from the, from, you know, Hell. And it's it, they have like a pool of, I think it was five or six different demons you can spawn. And then you're going to spawn this boss, which is going, of course, to try to kill you. And if you kill it, you'll probably get some good rewards. So beside of Hell Tides is now open all of World Tier 1 and 2. They also have this bridge system. There is more new stuff to Hell Tides. Like they're basically calling it also Hell Tide Reborn. Because, you know, it's it's a new Helltide system. So if you have done Helltides before, it's going to feel very different, very much better this time. Because they actually had a, a test server where people could test, test these stuff and actually give real value feedback to the developers so they know what was good and what was bad. Another thing is we are getting um, Andariel, which is the last boss in Diablo 2 Act 1. So you know when you do Act 1 in Diablo 2 and you get to the castle under the ground, you meet Andariel, which is the big scorpion lady. She is joining the Frey and Tormented Echoes, which is the place where you can summon bosses. You need to get some kind of like energy. Some I, I haven't done it myself, but you need to get some kind of like currency. Then you can summon these bosses and get whatever they drop. And now Andariel is going to be in the pool of those monsters you can summon. So the more monsters you know from Diablo 2, also the last boss in Act 2 with Diablo 2. I can't remember his name, but the very, very big worm. You can also summon him, but that's, that's like an old thing. But now Andariel is joining the, the group, which, which is nice. Um, so yeah, but Season 4, Loot Ripon is also of course getting a new battle pass which begins on may 14 10 a.m pt and hosts 90 reward tiers 28 free tiers and 62 premium tiers so if you want to just play the game for well i mean after after, after after you of course bought the game you will have 28 free tiers but you can also buy the premium tier which is going to give you 62 additional tiers and it will give you a lot of customizations like you know um transmogs uh, as you call them you know skins armor skins and i have seen some preview of this new season and it is i think one of the first battle passes in diablo that actually has interesting armor which i actually looking forward to so i'm probably going to buy the premium one and start you know i'm probably going to stream it so i'm going to be streaming it all the time on twitch tv slash dvalin now we've just got some self promo out but i will you can find me on twitch and i'll probably be streaming this game non-stop after today well not today because i'm actually going to germany today for two days of business 
But after that, I will go back and, and stream, which is going to be interesting. Um, they also had something before we end the topic of Diablo 4. They had a last topic, which was interesting because, you know, each season in Diablo 4 also has some kind of like quest, new law, new questing. And they had one thing here, which, which is what they call the Iron Wolves. And I have a little snippet here I took from the article, which I wanted to read up for you. Seek out the battle hardened and stalwolf Souther, the Anvil, a stoic, a stoic field commander of the Iron Wolves. So this person is called Stalwart Souther, Souther, the Anvil, a stoic field commander of the Iron Wolves. See, that's the thing. The Iron Wolves are a band of noble mercenaries in the south, seeking to protect the common people of Sanctuary and hold themselves to a higher code of honor than other mercenary, compan other mercenary companies of similar metal. Mysteriously, members of their ranks have been dying under suspicious circumstances. Seek out the source of this slaughter to earn the Iron Wolves' favor. Meet Saude in Kazakhstan to start your journey to uncover this deadly plot. Working with the Iron Wolves will earn you several tempering manuals, which are the key to unlocking the potential of your items in Season 4 Loot Reborn. Any Iron Wolf events that occur in Helltide will persist past the end of Season 4 Loot Reborn. So basically, if you really want to max min max this season, you got to be doing these Iron Wolves because it will give you a lot of these tempering manuals, as they say. So I think we've been coming quite a lot. Again, there's so much more. You can you can find more information about this. I just kind of wanted to give you the highlights. There's Diablo 4, Season 4. It's really going to be a big, big, big change for Diablo 4. The itemization, in-game stuff. There's going to also be... I don't know if they also had that in last season, but I know that's going to be this, the pit. I think it was also then the last season, but basically it's an end game dungeon. You can do a loan or two or three or four, and then you have to do it fastest as possible. And then there's like a leaderboard so you can see who's the best and so on. So if you're into like leaderboard, esport stuff, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. But it's going to be interesting to try when it releases today at 10 a.m. PT, the 4th, 14th May, 10 a.m. PT. So interesting. So um, that's uh, that was everything about Core Punk Diablo Four Season Four. But now we're gonna do a review of No Rest for the Wicked, which is a brand new ARPG in early access. And again, I only think they have probably released like twenty percent of the game, and more of the game is about to come. You know, they are working very hardly on this game, and yeah. So a brief overview about this game is it's basically you get tossed into this world where on an island where you are the Serim. The Serim is like a, um it's kind of like a kind of like a savior, a paladin, a holy knight from this mysterious place that always comes out and saves the world. And you are the Serim that they have summoned and you come to this island here where a plague is a hard, you know is basically destroying the island it's making people into monsters it's making animals into monsters it's just it's not just a chaos this this entire island here is just one big chaos there's ravagers like these bandits raiders who are like raiding the island and making it even worse so we're fighting raiders we're fighting monsters there's so many things going on this island here it's just a big chaos but we are here as the serim to save the world and there's a very, very strong story going on and so on. But yeah, well, let's let's cut this into pieces because I don't just want to talk about like one thing by like, I don't just want to talk about the game like it was a two minute make. I actually have cut every piece of the game into pieces. So we're going to talk about first the first impressions. So, I mean, the second thing, because we just talked about the brief overview of the game. What is a game? And... Let's talk about the first impressions. So the first impression I had of the game is you get into the game, you start on this boat, and you very fast learn about the controls. You very fastly see that this ARPG has a very Souls-like combat. It's hard. It's not It's not just like a walk in the park. You're going to die multiple times in this game. And I did. I died so many times in what you can call the tutorial part. 
so many times. And um, but again, the first impression, like the gameplay felt really good, the controls felt really good, the the mechanics, like the combat, the the way you move your character, it 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 feels so good. So when you go back to games like Diablo, you kind of feel like the game is a bit stall. You know, it's in Diablo, you click very much with your mouse and kill and click on things and it attacks them and so on. But this game here is so smooth in a different way that it just, you know, you, you're really going to miss that combat in other games. Um, but also hard, of course, also hard. I'm not saying Diablo 4 is a bad game. I'm just saying this gameplay here is very unique and really makes you want more of this kind of gameplay combat. Um, I had a fun first impression because actually when trying the game for the first time I made a video where I actually talked bad about the game. I said the game was too hard, I died way too many times and the, and the bus that is standing outside the city basically gatekeeping you for getting into the city and unlock all the mechanics in the game, upgrading, buying stuff and so many things you can unlock in the game is basically all behind a bus. And in my opinion, this boss was very hard. I thought this boss was very hard. Some people, they say, poof, Dwalin, this boss was the easiest boss ever. Like, he was the easiest. Well, I know people who literally can't beat the boss. They literally can't beat the boss. They are stuck and can't beat the boss. And I mean, of course, then they can either refund or get better. Um, but I think I had to, like, I died, like, five times to him. I think it was five or seven times. And then finally, I beat him. But, and then I stopped the game and I refunded it. And I actually, you know, said this game is too hard, it's too bad. I, I, I don't like it. I don't want to spend time in this game getting sweaty hands and being angry all the time. I don't like this. And then suddenly I just, I saw people keep writing on Twitter and stuff like that. You know, they keep saying this game is fantastic and... People kept coming to my video. My video kind of blowed up because, you know, of course, I'm talking bad about a game some people like. And people don't like when you talk bad about their games. They really don't like that. Um, so they came to me and was like, bro, you gave up on the worst part of the game. You should have continued just an hour and you would have loved the game. And what did I do? I bought the game again. I played the game for five more hours and I fell in love. Because when you kill that boss and you unlock the city, you get the option to buy items, to upgrade items, to enchant items, get a housing. Um, you know, there's so many things you can do after you unlock that city. And the game just feels so much more alive. The way you can walk around and explore the game. It's a big open world. And, you know, it's just like, yeah, I feel dumb for refunding and making a bad video about that game and then i of course made a video after that and saying hey i'm sorry this game is fantastic i'm wrong so first impression was bad but then became good so i could easily see people giving up in the start but if they actually press through if they really press through and come behind that bus and unlock the game i think most people are going to love the game but people who get stuck on that bus and can't continue from that bus, yeah. And then you, you could ask me, should we keep this bus here so hard so some people might even not come through him and end up refunding? Or should we nerf him a bit and make it a bit easier? Or maybe even save him for another part of the game and add an easier bus there? You know, there's so many things you could do. But again, it also comes down to what the developers want. Do they want a gatekeeping game where you need to be a certain amount good to play this game or should we make it a game a bit easier so everyone can follow again 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 it's just an impression from my side so that was kind of my first impression let's go down to gameplay so i think i mean i've already kind of like talked about this but the gameplay itself feels good you're controlling with a wasd but i will tell Anyone who plays this game, get a controller. This game is 10 times better with a controller. It is not, in my opinion, it's not worth playing on a keyboard. The keyboard feels, I don't know, not good. 
um, but the controller feels amazing. So playing this game with a controller is an amazing feeling. So if you want to play this game and you really want the best experience, I would highly recommend you to get a controller. And if you, of course, if you're a person who doesn't like controllers, the keyboard is fine. You can still use it. Don't worry, it's still fine. But I'm just saying, the controller is amazing compared to the keyboard in this game. But the game feels good. You get different weapons. You get different. You know, it has itemization. Um, it's kind of like you know, like Diablo. You have different items. You you can get like legendary items. You can get blue items, purple items. The blue items means it's in, it's enchanted in a positive way. Purple items means that it's also enchanted, but it has a, a negative effect on. For example, it could have a ne negative effect like. Um, when dying, you lose XP. When dying, you lose gold. When you're getting attacked, uh, hidden, you lose focus or stamina. You know, it has like some kind of like a negative effect. Um, so when you find a white item, which has no effects on, you can go to this lady, you can say enchanted, and then it will either randomly get purple or blue. And then you can be unlucky or unlucky. That's how the game is. And again, again, with every ARPG with itemizations, you always have these randomness with gearing, which is also the fun because you want to keep like grinding dungeons and so on for getting gear and upgrade them and see how good it goes. So, but gameplay wise, the game feels good. The gameplay, I don't know, it just feels good. The gameplay feels all, all good. I can't say anything bad about the, the gameplay. If we jump to the next minor topic about the, the review, we can go down to mechanics and controls. So mechanics, I would say you have spells on your weapons, so you can hold down a button to see all the, we the spells you have on your weapons, which works fine. You're using focus on these spells. So every time you hit or yeah, every time you attack, you get focus. And you have pretty little focus in the start, but if you want more focus, every time you level up, in, in, in this early access, you can get up to level 30. Every time you level up, you can you can choose a stat. So you can use like stats on focus, stamina, health, or you have some stats which are um, gear dependent. So you have strength for like equipping big weapons like stat, like, you know, uh, two hand swords, hammer, so on. Also some other items, but you know, usually the weapons that is behind strength. You also have dexterity, which is like daggers, bows, spears, and so on. You also got focus and intelligence, which focus is normally like, um, they kind of go hand in hand, but focus has a lot of like holy weapons where you can like put fire on your weapon, you know, the kind of you believe in, I don't know, you know, kind of like you believe in something and then you can put fire, you know, there's like different weapons in the game, which is tied to different stats. And of course, intelligence would normally be like a, a, a mage weapons and so on. So, and the game of course has melee weapons and it also has there, it has bows and staffs. The game is very melee heaven uh, here focused. So before an update recently came, you could only use melee weapons without using focus. Now they've changed it. So you can actually also shoot with your bow just by using stamina, which you generate all the, automatically all the time. You still have to hold on a button to shoot with the bow, so they kind of want you to have a dagger in your right hand and a bow in the left hand. There's no bow where it's just like your main weapon. Your main weapon. There's like no two hand bows, but I'm sure it's something that will come down the line because people really want to run like bow heavy builds. So far with mage, you also have to like attack to get focus, and then you need to use spells and so on. You can also use a spell where you actually sacrifice health to get focus and then you can of course keep shooting fireballs and you can of course also get like items that give you focus every time you hit an enemy and then you could kind of like make a build where you keep keep far casting items going into mechanics um this game has different bosses and all the bosses has very unique mechanics which are really fun there's some of the bosses that i beat in first attempt some of the bosses i had to do like the first one i had to do seven times and then you have the last boss in the um, early access, which I think I needed to try. Like, I think I had to like try, I tried like 20 times, then I died 20 times. And 
then I had to um, I had to go back to the city and upgrade my weapons a lot. Like I had to go out in the world and farm wolf claws and stuff like that. So my dag daggers actually deal the double damage. So instead of every every attack would deal six damage, they deal twelve damage. And then I was able to actually get him, I think, in first try after that. Which, of course, you know, tells a lot about the game where, like, you can you don't have to upgrade items if you're really good at dodging mechanics. Or if you really get bad at the game, well, not get bad at the game, but you know what I mean. Like, if you need a helping hand, you go out of the world, you farm materials, you upgrade your items, and boom. Now you deal with double damage. Perhaps you should be able to kill the boss now, which was the case for me. So... Going down to sorry, that was mechanics and controls. If you go down on challenges and level designs, so challenges again, I kind of have covered this, but challenges there's a lot of challenges in the game. Like the bosses are challenging itself, there's like events going on in the world. You have this daily questing system, weekly questing system to get items. Um, there's no multiplayer at the moment in the game. I, I haven't said that. It's coming in the first big, big, big update. Then they will be adding multiplayer so we don't know how that looks like right now but it's going to be interesting to see when it actually happens but regarding level design i feel like this game is is nice it doesn't feel like one of those auto generated ai games where you can see the world is just an auto generated level it feels unique and good like you can really see that this this game every level every detail of the map you go through has been really like some people have really been thinking about where to place the stones where to place the ladders you know everything has been very carefully thought about so the level design of this game just all the levels the dungeons everything perfect very 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 good so let's go to story and characters story and characters so the characters of the game which um, the story is about are very, I would say, very recognizable, like they are very unique and cool. Basically about the story, it's not a spoil, it's something you get from the first trailer. It's basically about this island here, which I can't remember the name of, but this island here is getting attacked or is having a problem with this plague. And we are the Serim coming to help. But also there is this kingdom away from this island here, which is kind of like, I guess, the kingdom or, well, you know, a big land. And this kingdom here, the king dies, and his son, which is about, well, you know what I mean, he's not a nice guy. You can just see in the trailer, he's not a nice guy. The son gets the power, and he's a good friend with the church, which, of course, has some strong allies. There's this lady here with golden hair. Not golden hair, but, you know, it's golden colored. And he's, he's basically sending her to the island to get rid of the plague. And of course, she's a bit like, you know, I don't care who's standing in front of me. I'm just going to kill everything in front of me. You know, that type of person, not a very nice church person. Um, so they're kind of going on a little crusade to this island to make sure that everything is going fine. Because he's, he's tired of listening about this plague. So they're going to go to this island here. But still, then you get into the city here. You meet the people who live in the city. You, you actually get, yeah, I don't want to spoil too much, but... It's a great story and you really get in bond with people in the city and you even get your own housings, which means, you know, they have accepted you and all that. So it's it's great. It's great. Story and characters in this game is great. Talking about graphics and sound, the sounds are really good. They help you differently with this game here. You can hear like, you know, when people, are, when monsters are coming, when they attack, when they're about to do an attack, they some of them do some kind of like grumbling. So you can hear Oko, oh, this guy, he's about to like spin around now and backlash me. So I'm going to go away. And just like every attack in the game feels so impactful. The, 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 the sound every time you attack something, just attacking barrels sounds amazing and looks amazing graphic-wise. And the controller shakes at the same time when you kill something or attack something, which makes it feel much, way more, I don't know, it feels way more like you are there because your controller is also, you know, vibrating as you're playing this game, which is which is nice. It really helps. The graphics also are amazing. I know some people still have some performance issues. I haven't had really any performance issues, but I'm also running a, 
F3070 RTX. So, but when streaming or recording videos, I had to set my frame rate to cap it at 60. But when not streaming or recording, I could easily set my cap up to 165, which is what my screen allows. But graphics are great. There's like um, rain, sun, you know, you have different weathers in this game. You can you have day and night. It, it's just like a lovely game. It looks amazing. It's like, a, it's kind of like a funny hand-drawn style. I don't know, like the game just looks differently from other games, but amazing at the same time. It's 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 weird. Um, we do we do also yeah I don't know what about what I was about to say so regarding replayability and content um, so basically you have like a twenty hour twenty hours of campaign I would say then you probably have like ten to twenty hours of well I get, well, no actually you have twenty probably like twenty five hours of story and campaign if you do it slowly and you explore the game at the same time. If you do it properly and don't just rush, you have a good 25 hours of campaign and exploring the game and doing all the basic stuff. But end game wise, you have infinity amount of gameplay. So basically they have this end game system with these dungeons, which for five minutes ago, I remember what it was called, but I can't, is it Crucible? I think it was, yeah, it's Crucible. They have these Crucible dungeons which is uh, it's like a it's like a layer you go down in it's like a crypt you go down in and they have all these different shrines you can activate and uh, in this early access there's only one shrine you can activate which require you put a drop of blood in it and also you need to find some like item i can't remember the name of but you find them in the open world if you go to like a open world zone and open a few chests you get a lot of them so you have this item here you then sacrifice into this shrine and then you can go to the middle of this crypt place and there's an elevator that goes down and then you come into this randomized well not random it's probably not randomized dungeon but it's like a it's like a dungeon that has different layers so imagine like a roguelike game where you have like probably like 25 levels you have to go through this is this dungeon so you get into a room and another room and another room and another room and another room until you get to the last room where you have to kill a strong boss and you get some legendaries from him in some chests. This is the end game right now. Of course, in the future, this is only the early version of this crucible. In the future, we're going to get a better crucible with more content to do, more variations. There are also going to be different like crucibles you can activate to make it game probably feel differently with different bosses and so on. But still, compared to it's an early access game, you actually have an endgame dungeon there. You can keep farming, which I personally feel is pretty cool for an early access game. So thumbs up for that, like big thumbs up for that. So again, good 25 hours of campaign, and then you have a unlimited yeah, in-game dungeon you can do. And you can create a new, every time you, you, you do this dungeon, you get a, like a lot of XP potions, which you can save, and then you can put it in a bank. You can create a new character, join the same world, and then you can basically put your character, you can use all those potions on your second character, so you can level up and try different builds. The reason for why right now you need different characters is because when you choose a stat, you get stat locked. You cannot reset stats. But I know they're working on something right now that can reset stats. So for example, if you have made a full strength build to use big two-hand weapons, and you suddenly say, hey, I want to try by be a mage. Well, the only reason right now is to create a new character and give him XP potions or level up in the world you already have unlocked. And then you can play try him. But it will be better when they add this reset stat thing so you can actually try different things in the same character. So if we go into comparisons of this game here, is there other games on the market that reminds me of this? And I would say... The ARPG elements is very much like Diablo with items and just how the game works and the world is with campaign and all that. So world-wise, I would say this game reminds me, campaign-wise, it reminds me a lot of Diablo 3. You know, you're kind of following a path. Um, this game is still a bit more open world and more you can do way more exploration. So I would actually say this game is a good comparison of if Diablo, just the entire Diablo franchise, and Elden Ring had gotten a child together. 
because Elden Ring has this exploration, this running around, finding resources, you know, and Diablo has this ARPG element. So I would say, yeah, Elden Ring and Diablo, if they had gotten a child together, it would be no rest for the wicked. Definitely. So let's get to the conclusion. Did I think this game was good? And if I should, if I should give it a rating, what should it be then? So again, conclusion, of course, you can probably hear it on me. I love this game. I'm not playing it anymore as we're speaking right now, but that's kind of because I've done everything. So again, it's early access. So we're just waiting for more content to come right now. Um, but still, very, very good game. I can highly recommend it for anyone who just likes either Diablo, a Souls-like game, a Golden Ring, and yeah, a Diablo fan, or so or Path of Exile. So if you're a fan of that, you should definitely try this. If I should give it any kind of rating for this game, I would honestly give it a solid 8 out of 10. And you could say, wow, that's a high score. Well, it's it, I am not normally into single play games. I know it's going to get multiplayer later, but I am normally not into single play games. I have not completed a finished single play game in a very long time. But this game here made me finish it. I finished it. I was happy. I love streaming. People can see on my stream. I was enjoying it. I was just having the best time of my life. You know, I'm not, not the best time. You know what I mean? I was enjoying it. Like I was highly enjoying it. And the customization of the game, the story, just everything was fantastic. So, and you could probably say, okay, why didn't it give it a 10 then? Well, there needs to be more content. There needs to be a bit more, perhaps like balance updates. Still some things in the game is a bit wacky you know you that's the point of early access game there's a lot of things you can put a finger on saying why can't i reset my stats why are uh, like all the items i get keeps having different stats than what i have right now so i can't use half the items i get this, this is annoying why can't i adopt to these items why is um is the stashes in my inventory so small why is the chest that's in my housing so small you know why i could like keep coming with a list of things that i would you know that was not the main things that i would say but you know it was just a list some of the things i would say but you know we need more in-game activities as well we need multiplayer we need some kind of like pvp if possible i know they're going to come with some kind of arena system just there's a lot of things we need to this game and perhaps when all this comes i could get maybe a 10 out of 10 or 9 out of 10 but as we speak right now I would say it's a solid 8 out of 10, as right now. So I think that's the conclusion of No Risk for the Weekend. So again, uh, regarding the Violence Tavern, my uh, gaming podcast, we have now speaking about Core Punk, Early Access and Alpha, Diablo 4 Season 4, and No Risk for the Wicked Early Access Review. I hope you enjoyed my, you can say my pilot, my first episode of this podcast Dwalin's Tavern your go-to gaming podcast I hope you enjoyed the first episode and um, again my plan is to release two episodes every week it could be that I have some bad weeks where I only upload one episode but my goal is to have two episodes every week and remember this podcast is about news reviews interviews and table discussions so for example I could invite a friend in who have watched also watched the Fallout TV series and we could be sitting and discussing what do we think about it, the Fallout TV series, for example. So yeah, stuff like that. So again, thank you everyone for still every, for everyone who's still here for listening to my rambling and my podcast for whatever time it had taken on me to talk about all this. I appreciate you all for listening and uh, well, let me know on social media if you enjoy this podcast. And again, I'm looking forward to do way more episodes than this one here. So thanks for watching, listening on either YouTube, Spotify, any podcast platform, literally. So thanks for being here. And I'll see you another day. Peace out.